In this third video about diabetes, we'll learn about a very important number called A1C and why we care about it. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Graham Dersna. Welcome to Bite Size Medicine, your go-to channel for short, easy to understand videos about the common medical topics that matter to you. If you're new, make sure to subscribe, get involved in the comments, and check out the description below for links and resources. Let's get started. As we've learned in the previous videos, diabetes is a disease that relates to how our body manages sugar, specifically glucose, which means a doctor is able to monitor their glucose level and some other values in a person with diabetes to find out how well they're managing it and if any changes need to be made to the treatment plan. One of the values that is monitored is called A1C. So let's talk about why it's monitored. To be a little more specific in the name, it isn't just A1C, it's actually hemoglobin A1C. So what is hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is a protein in our red blood cells and its job is to carry the oxygen we breathe to all the cells of our body. Glucose is able to connect or bind to hemoglobin and when it does, it's called hemoglobin A1C. Now that we know what hemoglobin A1C is, why is it an important value? Your A1C is a number that tells you about the glucose level in your blood for the previous three months, because red blood cells, where the hemoglobin A1C is, live for about four months. Everyone has a little bit of hemoglobin A1C, but the amount increases as the amount of glucose in the blood increases. Therefore, people with diabetes have a higher A1C. Someone without diabetes will have an A1C less than 5.7, while someone with diabetes will have an A1C more than 6.5. So when treating diabetes, the A1C is recorded about every three months or six months if it's closer to normal to see if it's increasing, decreasing, or staying the same. That's the first reason why it's important to know about A1C. You can tell how well you've been managing your diabetes over the last three months based on your A1C, and your doctor can change your treatment plan accordingly. We want to try and keep it as close to normal as possible because if it's too high, then that means there's a lot of glucose in the blood, which leads to the problems discussed in the first video. The other reason to care about this number is because of that middle interval between 5.7 and 6.5. This interval is typically called pre-diabetes. It's the interval where the amount of glucose in the blood is higher than normal and your cells might be starting to ignore the insulin, which we previously learned was called insulin resistance. This is a very important time because all of those modifiable risk factors from the second video need to be addressed and improved to get your A1C level back to normal. Otherwise, if it goes over 6.5, you get the diagnosis of diabetes and will need to start treatment. If you have one or more of the risk factors for diabetes, discuss them with your doctor and find out if you need to check your A1C. Refer back to the second diabetes video if you need a reminder about what the risk factors are. In the next video, we'll learn about the other number we monitor and treatment for type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed the video, learned something new, have any questions, have a personal experience in this area that you'd like to share, or have ideas for a future video. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time for another delicious bite of medicine.